there's always a sense of urgency. I don't sense a greater sense of urgency this season than I sense at the beginning of every season since we made it to the Final Four. Once you go and you play in that environment, there, there's no other answer. You, uh, I remember after the uh, championship game in 2002, Gino Ariema caught me in the hallway. We were going to get on our respective buses, and he said, the biggest danger here is for you to think you do this every year. It, this is a really hard place to get to, and you got to figure out how to be okay and pick up the pieces when you don't and move forward. And then he told me how long it took him to get back there after his first one, and I put my fingers in my ears and said, la, 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 because I, you want to go back immediately. And uh, there's a different feeling with the Final Four once you've been there and played. You go there and watch now, and you're just a little bit irritated. It's hard to sit there. Uh, but that's part of it. That's part of what makes it great. So there's always... Uh, a sincere sense of urgency and and maybe stronger probably the strongest sense of urgency I've felt since that year would be uh, season before when we had six seniors six fabulous kids who I thought if ever there were a group of kids who deserve to play in the national championship game this is it well have you seen how many people show up here I mean it's fabulous our our, our sooner support here in the Tulsa area is just it's been unbelievable, and um, these guys are loyal. You know, it's not easy to get in the car and drive all the way to Norman for a midweek game, and we have lots of Tulsa fans who do that, and we have lots who, when they can't do that, follow us religiously through the television or through the radio broadcast, and it's nice to be able to shake hands. I, I love caravans because we get to be up, and, up close and personal with the people who really we play for, you know, and so... Um, uh, lots of wonderful people here in Tulsa. We love coming here. It's always one of the caravans that energizes us as a coaching staff. Sure, you said something about uh, maybe someday if you don't run out of gas. <laughs> are you close to running out of gas, or you still got a full tank? Or? What do you think, Barry? You work hard too. Got a full tank to me. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. So? Oh, I, I think the business. Honestly, I think the business gets harder year by year. I think. Um, and yeah, yeah. I, I think that the the number of, of girls who are playing women's or who are playing basketball is outstanding, and we love it. Young girls dribbling everywhere, coming to camps, playing in the summer. Um, but with that come some of the things that maybe aren't quite so enjoyable. And I think we need look no further than our men's game to know that's one of the things that's unique about women's basketball. We sort of have somebody who's walk the path and we can look up there and say Oop, there's a pothole we want to avoid that and I, I think with the growth comes some of those same difficulties and so it, it's not quite the same Barry as it was um, you know 10-12 years ago certainly when I started but not all of it's bad some of it's fabulous look at how much we're on television uh, look at our attendance I mean, we have 10-11 thousand people coming every time we open the doors at the Lloyd Noble Center we moved into third in the country in attendance there are some great things you know, it used to be when you were third in the country in attendance, you might have had, I mean, you had 2,500 people who came to your game. Now it means you average 10,800 folks every time you open the doors. So there have been some fabulous good things that adjust with that. Um, but you have to, I think you have to monitor your own energy level. And I always um, keep tabs on that. I, I just, I'm a huge Dean Smith fan. I don't know if you can say that when Jeff Capel's from Duke. I don't know if you can do that. I'm sorry, Jeff. I love you more. But, um, I remember listening to Coach Smith through the years say when he didn't feel like he had the energy to give his kids everything that they deserved every day is when he would walk away. And I've learned from Roy Williams it's the same thing. So I just try to monitor that. Right now, I got more energy than you know what to do with. Who knows what happens, you know, in five years or whatever. It would seem like it could get easier for you in a few next few years so your kids eventually be grown. Like My five, personal children? Yeah, five, ten, yeah. I guess I have a lot of children. Yeah, They're just not, not all personal. No, I'm not talking about Kate Hill, Anisha <laughs> Coffee. Can I count them if I want to? Five or eight, ten years, whatever, from now, a big chunk of your responsibility or time demands, you're going to get a relief from that. Yeah, but don't you think we have that backward? I mean, think about it. We, we should really be at, at home all the time while our children are small, and then we should be out working when they're gone, and yet that's not the way the world works. You, you, don't, you don't get to then go and become a Division One head coach when you're 52. It just doesn't work that way. Right. And so... But, but when you get to 52... I might be so tired from doing both that I want to lay on a beach every day. I don't know. <laughs> no, but you're right, Barry. I, I have young coaches, and I don't consider myself in that category anymore. 
young coaches in the business come in and say, um, does it get any easier because they have these new little ones, you know? And I have to tell them quite candidly, no, it gets harder before it gets easier because when they don't have lives of their own, they their life gets to become your life and you throw them in a shoulder pack or over your arm or whatever and you throw them in the car seat and here you go. And then when they get bigger and they have games and schedules and school and plays and concerts and suddenly they have a life too and you have to make some really hard decisions and you miss out on some things and it gets tougher I think. Um, but rewarding nonetheless. It sounds doom and gloom. It's not. Um, they have a lot of people that love them and have some fabulous experiences that they wouldn't get any other way. Mm -hmm. Make choices. Thank you. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you.